Complete invertebrate classification. Being a biologist or especially zoologist, we must have a big picture of classification in the mind by understanding the terms uh, like diploblastic, triploblastic, protostomes, deuterostomes, coelomates, acelomates, pseudocelomates, agdizozoans, lophochocozoans, cyclonurelians, spiralia, panarthropoda, ambulacraria, plitizoa, trochozoa, lophophorates and cardata, we can make a big picture of animal classification which give us basic idea behind as well as we can remember and reproduce classification during exams. Hope you will love it. Let's start. All the multicellular animals are divided into three basic categories. Those having poorly defined tissue layers, those having two body layers and those having three body layers. So diploblastic are those which have only ectoderm and endoderm, mesoderm is missing. While triploblastic are those which have all the three body layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. So among the poorly defined tissue layers uh, uh, are included uh, phylum porifera and phylum placozoa. Porifera means sponges, uh, porous body and phylum placozoa are lesser known phyla. Among the diploblastic there are also only two phyla, phylum uh, nidaria and phylum tinophora. So these are the two phylum which have only two body layers, ectoderm and endoderm. Mesoderm is missing and we know that uh, mesoglia is present instead of mesoderm. Let's move toward the triploblastic uh, classification. Triploblastic organisms are further divided into two categories, protostomes and deuterostomes. So protostomes are those organisms in which mouth forms first during process of development, while among the deuterostomes, anus opening forms first during development. So let's move toward the protostomes first. Protostomes are further divided into two categories uh, or clades you can say agdysozoans and lophotrochozoan. Agdysozoans are those animals uh, which shed their uh, body uh, either exoskeleton or segments while lophotrochozoans mean organisms which have lophophore and trochophore larva. Both categories or both characteristics are present among the members of the lophotrochozoan. So let's move toward the agdysozoans first. Agdysis ones are further divided into two clades, cyclonurelians and panarthropods. Cyclonurelia mean uh, those organisms uh, which having a nerve ring or brain around their pharynx. So among the cyclonurelians, there are five phyla, nematoda, nematomarpha, priapolida, lorisifera and kynorentia. So these uh, five phyla are among the cyclonurelians, while Panarthropods include Arthropoda, Tardigrada and Onychophora. Now let's check uh, whose uh, of these phyla are uh, coelomate, pseudocoelomate or acoelomates. So the nematodes are pseudocoelomates. Nematomarpha are complete pseudocoelomates while Priapluda is an exception. There are some members which, have, which are coelomate and as well as pseudocoelomates among the priapolids. Similarly among the lorosiferans. There are uh, some organisms which have uh, uh, no body cavity, they are acylomate while some have pseudocelome. Kynorinchians are uh, all pseudocelomates. So uh, now it is uh, easy for you to remember. Now you can remember all these names uh, by uh, taking the first letter and making any uh, sentence or uh, any alphabetical order. Priapolids, uh, arthropods, all uh, priapolids are coelomate. They have complete or true body cavity coelome. Now that is uh, all about uh, the protostomes, ecdysozoan. Now let's move toward the lophotrochozoans of protostomes. Lophotrochozoans are further divided into two categories basically. I have divided them into two categories, spiralians and non-spiralians simply. So spiralia mean uh, they have spiral cleavage during the process of development and uh, spiralia have further three clades, platyzoa, trochozoa and lophophorates. Now platyzoa are those organisms which have flat body, Trochozoans are commonly called as those which have trochophore larvae in their life cycles and the lophophorates are those which have lophophore pharynx uh, in the uh, structure. So among the platyzoa, platyelminthes, rotifera, acanthocephala, gnathostomolida, micrognathozoa and gastrotica. These are the six phyla which belong to uh, clade platyzoa and uh, platyelminthes are acelomate, 
Rotiferens are pseudocoelomate, acanthospherens are pseudocoelomate, gnathostomolida are also acoelomate, micrognathosva are also acoelomate, while gastrotrica are coelomate among all the platyzoans. So the question can be asked that among the platyzoan, which phylum has two body cavities? So gastrotrica. Similarly, you can remember these names by constructing our dichotomy or the alphabets and can construct a simple sentence. Now, the trochozoans are those which have trochophore larva, mesozoans, nomatia, annelida, and mollusca. These four phyla belong to uh, clade trochozoa. And among these, uh, nomatians are acylomates, annelids are coelomates, and mollusks are also true coelomates, or they have true coelom or true body cavity. Now, there are two phyla which uh, are not included among these three clades of spiralians, although they are spiralians, but they are neither platyzoa, trochozoa, or lophophorate, and they are brachiopods and foronids. So, brachiopoda and foronida are both coelomate, have complete or true body cavity. Lophophorates uh, include uh, bryozoans and uh, antoprocta. So, antoprocta and bryozoa both are true uh, coelomate or have complete coelom. Now, among the non-spiralians uh, uh, which are uh, which do not have a spiral cleavage uh, in the process of development, they are cyclophora and uh, chitogonetha and both are coelomate have true body cavity. Now, watching or uh, uh, observing this complete dichotomy, it becomes easier for you to categorize these phyla into different clades and uh, in the paper or exams, questions are usually asked that which of the phylum is not uh, Lophotrochozoa, is not Ecdysozoa, is not a Deuterostome, is not a Protostome. So you have to remember all these categories and the specific phyla which belong to each Clade. Now let's move toward the next part. Deuterostomes. Deuterostomes are those organisms in which Aeneas forms first during the process of development and deuterostomes are basically divided into two clades, major clades, Ambulacraria and Chordata. So there is another phylum uh, which is called Xenoturbolida and Xenoturbolida phyla is not included either among the Ambulacrarians or among the Chordates. So that is placed in the separate lineage Xenoturbolida, please remember that is an exception. Ambulacraria are further divided into two uh, phyla which are Hemichordata and Echinodermata. So please remember that which phyla are Ambulacrarian or which is not. So Hemichordata and Echinodermata are the only two phyla which are Ambulacrarian. Ambulacraria mean uh, they can walk uh, or they can uh, run, uh, swim in the water but that, that uh, characteristics is not the uh, defining characteristics here, please remember. Similarly, chordates are further divided into three phyla, urochordata, cephalochordata and vertebrata and we know that all these hemichordates, echinoderms, urochordates, cephalochordates, vertebrates, xenoturbolida, all are coelomate and they have complete or true body cavity. Now by uh, observing this uh, dichotomy of the classification, you can easily remember as well as can reproduce uh, these uh, belongings or these classification in the exam. Now let's have a little bit uh, overview. Diploblast versus diplo diploblast. We have already seen that phylum Nidaria and Tinophora are the only two phylum which are diploblast and all the rest higher phyla are triploblast. Now it becomes easier for you to remember only two diploblast and all other. So if I ask that whether platyelminthes is a diploblast or triploblast, now you can say that platyelminthes is a triploblast because they are not among Nidarians or Tinophore. Similarly, acylomate versus pseudocylomates. So phylum platyelminthes, gnathostomolida, micrognathozoa, and nomatia. These four phyla are acylomate completely and they do not have coelom at all. Please remember platyelminthes, gnathostomolida, micrognathozoa, and nomatia. These four are uh, the phyla which do not have coelom at all. While Phylum Nematoda, Nematomorpha, Kynorincha, Rotifera, and Acanthospella. These five phyla have pseudocelom 
all the organisms among these five phyla have pseudocilom they are they are uh, uh, belongs to only uh, these phylum five categories now there are exceptions phylum lorisifera as we have seen previously have both acilomate and pseudocilomate organisms similarly phylum priapolida have both coelomate and pseudocilomate so we can say that uh, priapolids are also belong to pseudocilomate category similarly lorisiferans also belong to pseudocilomate category but they are among acilomates so please remember now questions are always asked from exceptions so you have to remember these exceptions now all the rest higher phyla are coelomate uh, as we know the next distinction is uh, between schizocelus versus enterocelus uh, cavity that how coelom is formed uh, that different phyla are categorized on the basis of the formation pattern of the coelom so among the schizocelus all protostome coelomates those protostomes which have body cavity coelomates have coelom formed by splitting of mesoderm which is called schizocele so previously you uh, remember that all the phylums which are coelomate and they are protostome they are schizocelous while all deuterostomes which uh, uh, belongs to uh, the clade deuterostome are all enterocelous in which coelom is formed by pouches of gut wall and that's why the word entero entero mean gut is included here enterocelous hope you have understood the basic idea behind the classification of uh, invertebrates as well as vertebrates thank you so much